Hi, today I want to talk about setting the bow hand. Now notice I said setting the bow hand and not the bow hold or the bow grip because those words tend to bring to mind tension or tightness, you know, gripping the bow or holding on tight. And really what we want to do is we want to use the minimum amount of effort or muscle to keep the bow from sliding out of the hand. Now the style of bow hand that I teach is the Franco-Belgian style. Uh, another common one is the Russian style. It looks something like this. I'm not an expert on it, but there are plenty of good YouTube videos out there if you're interested. So I want to note that I have placed this piece of blue tape right here just uh, above the frog and uh, behind what's called the grip here, this leather grip. When the bow hand is set initially, you will locate this dot, which is on the middle joint of the middle finger, right in the middle of that joint. You locate that right over the blue tape with the bow oriented this way, the top of the stick pointing towards the ceiling. Also, you'll want to have the student stand in playing position, which means feet shoulder width apart, toes turned out, and knees soft. Now normally, I would want to include a clip of me working with one of my young students so that the parents out there could get comfortable working with their children, setting their bow hand at home. But right now, our society is under social distancing guidelines because of coronavirus, so that's not really possible. But luckily, one of my students' parents sent me a video from uh, his daughter Grace's first lesson where I concisely demonstrate uh, the setting of the bow hand. So what I recommend you do is you watch this clip of Grace, watch the rest of this video, then come back and watch the clip with Grace once again after you're a little bit more informed. We go, okay. We're good. So we got feet in playing position, soft knees. Okay. I'm going to hold the arm. Perhaps we'll do a little drop. Oh, I'll see we got caught there. Ah, there we go. Good. If it seems like we're getting stiff, let's do the drop. I'm going to locate this tape right underneath this dot on her finger. And the dot should point at the ceiling, which it is. The hand is supporting itself. Now I'm going to take my index finger, curl under her pinky to curl it, and place it on the corner behind the top facet. This is excellent. Now I'm going to hook under with my index finger and then kind of also hold with the thumb. Now this hand is free. This hand comes underneath and while I turn the bow up, I'm also turning the two bones in her arm. I'm going up and now I'm bending the thumb like this, placing it half on the hair, half on the ferrule. She's got it. I'm kind of helping her steady it until she does. Now she's got it. Now look at your tip and count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Eight, nine, ten. Great, and let's take a look at this. We're essentially straight across. I'll just tweak a little there. We'll turn back a little bit. And uh, every finger is nice and round. Let's take a look inside. If we can look down from above, nice and open and circular shape in there, essentially. The thumb is bent. That's important. So, yeah, that's it. Excellent. So, if I just sneak up on my hand, when it's completely relaxed, it's essentially a bow hold. I just have to do some very minor modifications to allow it to, to hold the bow comfortably and in a relaxed manner. Uh, the spacing of the fingers as they are when they're limp like this is appropriate for a bow hold. A lot of students make the mistake of extending the pinky finger out like this or something. Uh, that's not necessary or beneficial. We just let the pinky uh, drape over the bow where it lies and move it into proper position from there. So the first thing I want to do is get my bow hand relaxed. Shaking it like this, flopping it around uh, can help with that. If you're a parent, you can do this to your child's arm. In fact, dropping their arm, that's a great exercise to make sure that they're relaxed. You can usually feel it when they're holding their arm up and then you catch them and, oh, I tricked you. I, your arm's still in the air. It should have fallen. So we want to get the bow arm nice and floppy. Then we hang the hand off of the bow. So you bring the bow up into the student's hand. 
And at this point, that red dot should be pointing at the ceiling. Notice it's not going like this, and the fingers aren't like this, but you know that dot with the, the bow in this orientation is pointing at the ceiling. So floppy arm, hang, then we curl the pinky, just bringing it back like that. Now I suppose it could go directly on top of the top facet of the bow, but I prefer to have it on the corner just inside of that because that allows you to use the pinky to track the bow back and forth like this. It allows you to push a little bit with the pinky. So we get the arm floppy, hang, curl the pinky. At this point the wrist is down. It will be useful to have the wrist more elevated at some point, but I'm not worried about that right now. Now the next step is we're going to turn the arm like a doorknob, okay? And simultaneously, we raise the bow up. If we don't turn the arm like a doorknob while we raise the bow up, we'll get something like this. You know, the fingers pronate, as it's called. And I'd like to keep the fingers pretty perpendicular to the stick at this point. I do tend to play with my fingers a little bit pronated like this, but also my hand is is moving quite a bit as I play. A beginner student is going to have a fairly uh, relaxed but stable hand, and I, I just like to start with a position like this rather than like this, okay? We can tend to get, if we, if we get too far this way, we tend to get all kinds of strange you know, bracing with the pinky and that kind of stuff. So this is a good way to help avoid that. So again, we get the hand floppy, we hang the hand off of the bow, we curl the pinky, we turn the doorknob at the same time, we raise the bow up, and then for a young beginner student, we will place the thumb out here, half on the metal ferrule and half on the hair. For a more advanced or older beginner student, the thumb will go inside the frog right here, half on the stick and half on the frog. That's the reason why we're starting half on the hair and half on the ferrule, so that it translates up here like this. We don't want the thumb, you know, I can't even, my thumb's too big, but, you know, wedged in there like that, okay? We want the thumb half on the wood of the stick. So to recap, we get the hand floppy, we hang the hand on the bow, we curl the pinky, we turn the doorknob while we're turning the bow up, and then we place the thumb either half on the hair and half on the ferrule, or half on the stick and half on the frog. Notice all the fingers are curled and relaxed and the thumb is bent. The thumb is not braced like this. Okay, we want a bent thumb, everything nice and round like that. If you or your student is double jointed in the thumb where this can go in here, we want to work to support uh, that joint a little bit to keep it from collapsing in. So you can do single, uh, simple finger push-ups like this and not allowing that joint to collapse in. You're only using the amount of pressure uh, that will uh, not trigger that to collapse. So for a beginner student, I want to have them set the bow hand a minimum of 10 times a day. We'll set Stare at the tip and count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then repeat. So after the student does this about 100 times, this will be a lot easier. They'll be able to set it a lot faster. At that point, we can go on to playing some bow games that will uh, increase the amount of control and dexterity the student has with the bow. I'll put a link up here for that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it. Uh, please feel free to leave your comments below. Go ahead and click that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one.
All right, bye-bye.